Hey folks, I'm Patrick Francie, host and creator of this show, the Everyday Millionaire Podcast, as well as the Everyday Millionaire Mindset Matters Podcast, which is what we're doing today. And I'm joined by the amazing Stephanie Hanlon, who is an Olympic and world-class mental performance coach. And we're unpacking the topic today of life and business. Is your life all about your business or is your business actually supporting the life you're looking to create? We're going to dig into some of the details of having an amazing life and business, how they come together, uh, embracing the cliche that if your business or if your vocation is in fact like your vacation, you'll never work another day in your life. We're going to dig into the details of that thought process. We'd love for you, however, to make sure that you subscribe, to like, to comment, to hit the notification bell as we're trying to increase our audience with YouTube where we can create that community. So if you like it, let us know as well as comment. And if you don't like it, let us know why. That's all that we ask because then we can improve the show. So listen in, we're about to get started. So today we are after another great topic, Stephanie. How about this? Your business, your life. What do you think? Well, your business, your life, technically it's one thing, unless you have a a Uh J-O-B where you look forward to a Friday and then you just, you know, blow it up on the weekend and then not really look forward to Monday. Uh, you know, we really only have one life. I get it, but you're going, geez, you go deep really fast, but let's talk a little bit about that because, you know, when we think about your business, your life, you know, it's taken us, it took us a lot of years to kind of bring these pieces of the puzzle together. And ultimately what we're talking about to your point is it is just one thing. It is just life. If you're an entrepreneur, a solopreneur, it seems that it's all, you know, business and, or, they are separate and you want to get a break or actually you don't have a life. It's all business and you are tired and you're overworked and you're feeling overwhelmed. And how the heck did I get myself into this situation? Perhaps there's a lot of things that go on with being an entrepreneur slash solopreneur. And some of that's what we're going to break down today. You know, uh, it's part of what we actually coach, uh, have coached for many years. It's part of our shift coaching program as well. But let's break down some of the things that when we think about your business, your life, uh, I want to give you a foundation to start with, which is, this is cliche. I think everybody's heard it, but we want to work on our business, not just in our business. But it actually kind of encapsulates what we think about in terms of shifting. And what we talk about shift, it's your need to make order or to create your business that really works for you. So in other words, you're not at the effect of your business, you're creating your business so it works for you. So that ultimately the purpose of your business is to serve your life. Your life isn't there to serve your business. And I have to say, we've seen it many times, we've experienced it ourselves, where all of a sudden, if you're a solopreneur, an entrepreneur, or even if you've got big, uh, I guess, audacious careers where you really want to take things on, take on the world, the next thing you know, it's like, what the heck happened here? Well, your life can look a little chaotic if you don't have some sort of um, context for your life that includes living your life on purpose or having a business that supports your life, etc. So I think what happens is it gets conflated. We think that, you know, if my job or my business takes over, then I don't have a life and I have to take a vacation to get away from my life. You know, in order to do that, I have to, you know, work for someone else. We tell ourselves all these stories about why we work, how we work, what work is, what business is. And I've had actually had business partners and people tell me that, you know, I love what I do, but I'm not a business person. And I don't actually believe that. I think on some level, we're all sort of, we're all business people in order to pay our bills, in order to have the success we have in our Western culture, in order to make a contribution, in order to have enough money left over to donate to charities, in order to to take care of our families, we need to understand that in order to have a life and a business that are practical and productive, we need to have an attitude that looks forward into the future and understand that we're planning and preparing for what that can look like. You know, we're working back from a very different stage of life right now. You know, you mm-hmm. and I at our age, you know, you had a milestone birthday recently. I've had one about five years earlier than yours, but we're moving forward in into a, a really interesting time of our lives. And I think that's why this 
this conversation has become so important to us. You know, when we're sharing with people and working with our clients and we're helping them work backwards from what they want their life to feel like and what they want their life to look like, business and work is a big part of that. Well, you know, if you're in business, if you're, again, an entrepreneur, I mean, these are things that I sometimes I don't want to wish I knew it earlier. I think I did. It just I didn't know how to get there. You know, there is a ultimate you know, what are the steps to do things? You know, the technicians in the world love that conversation. Just tell me what to do. But if it was that simple, more people would have done it. I think the conversation I'd like to really get on to today is, you know, it is still a mindset conversation. You know, how to create business. You know, we talk about it often in the real estate world is how to invest in real estate. It's all been done before, you know, give me a business and we'll break it down operationally, technically, we'll look at marketing, we'll look at the narrative, we'll look at the brand promise, uh, we'll look at, for example, what is the brand, you know, what do you represent, but that's all good. Those are pretty kind of common steps. It's not easy necessarily, but there is a way of doing things where we run into the problem is how do we do those things and still have a life, still have and look after a family, uh, have recreation time and or what does it look like if you're not working and does that actually support the lifestyle? So what are we working backwards from? So, you know, we ask questions like, are you living your best life and, you know, truly being your greatest self or at least defining that or redefining that perhaps? Or, and this is a big one I want to talk on with you, which is something that we've had discussions about you have it with your clients all the time which is do you believe in yourself and do you actually believe you can intentionally create and live your life by design so we can enter that conversation in any number of places but ultimately we have to say you know whether it's a great career or a business that you've started or are in the middle of or well on your way you know are you feeling like it is serving your life and your lifestyle the way you intended it to do that. And are you prepared or can you work backwards from that outcome? Are you clear on what that outcome is perhaps is the better question. Well, I think I'm just going to slow you down there for a minute, cowboy, is that <laughs> when you say living your best life, be your greatest self. For me, I want to make sure that it doesn't land when people hear us say that is that your life has to be perfect mm -hmm. and you have to be perfect and you can't screw up. You can't make mistakes. You can't snap show or you can't have a bad day. That's not what that means. I mean, when, my, when I say that and I hear you say that living your best life, being your greatest self, it's just, are you doing the work? Are you aligning your purpose with your passion? Are you able to, you know, be authentic and be truthful and speak your truth and own your power when it comes to decision making, for example. So living my best life, being my greatest self doesn't mean I have to be perfect. And I want to make sure that we really drive that home is that I've heard people actually comment and send me notes and saying, well, I don't know if I'm living my, my, my greatest life and my best self. How do I know that? And I said, well, you know what? check in on yourself, check in with flow. Are you in alignment with your values? Are you taking care of yourself, nurturing yourself in seven areas of your life? Are you being authentic? Are you surrounding yourself with people who challenge you, not just like-minded people that are just, you know, you know, patting you on the back? Are you putting, well, we need like-minded people, but not always just the ones that pat us on the back. So what does that mean? So when you define living your best life, being your greatest self, I really think it's important that when we understand what that means, it means something different to everybody. Well, I think there's a couple things around that. I'd never actually thought, I'd never had that comment. So interesting that you bring that up. So we'll take it for what it is. No, it's not about being perfect because who defines perfect? It's, you know, I listened to a recent podcast where they used the word success a lot. By the way, it was a great podcast, loved it. Uh, but they used the term success a lot. And in that, there was no way of defining what success is. They had some great points. They made some, and they talked a lot about business and buying businesses and owning businesses and exiting businesses and all of the things. And they kept using this word success, which is, I think it, the word success is just thrown out there arbitrarily and it's supposed to mean the same thing for everybody, which is usually measured by dollars and cents. And I've learned in interviewing many everyday millionaires that the last thing that success is ultimately measured in by those who have actually had financial success is their financial success. 
So there's a question that I get to, which is, is life happening to you or is it happening for you? And what are you doing to orchestrate that? So for me, the best definition of success that I've got to, which I've shared often, which is in any given time, have you achieved the outcome and are you living the life that you had envisioned? Now, there isn't one end game called, oh, this is the vision for my life, or this is an end game. This is because our, our values change, our life is changing, we're evolving, therefore our vision is evolving. So at any given time, I shared this story many times that I think you and I have talked about it, of course, so many times where we were laying in bed. This was many years ago. I think I was 45. And we were laying in bed reading on a Sunday morning, which we often did. And I came to the realization that I had achieved everything I set out to achieve. And it was like, wow, what next was first? I think maybe before that, I went, holy cow do I ever dream too small? Oh, wow. You know, and I don't know if you remember that. It was an epiphany. I don't know what we were reading in the moment. I went, holy cow, this is exactly, I'd achieved exactly what I wanted to achieve. And I went, wow, I think way too small. So that was an interesting takeaway. But what are we talking about here? I think that's important is that, and I don't want to step over the fact that the other thing, I remember you sitting in a chair when we had first moved to BC in our big wingback chair in our, in our little townhouse. And you said, you know, success is simple. Yeah. Significantly impact many people's lives every day. You came up with the acronym simple, simply impact many people's lives every day. Yeah. Success is simple. And that's because I get it. It resonates with me because I'm purpose driven. Mm -hmm. So having that as my purpose, I always know that money will flow when I'm in my purpose. I I just know because I'm a magical creator. I have a context for money. I have a very strong, large, wide bucket container Mm -hmm. for how I hold money. But I know that if I'm not purpose driven, then I can I can I can be a destroyer. Like I can I can be pretty, pretty powerful on both sides. So for me, success is simple. So let's talk about a couple of things that I want to touch on today, which is when you're looking at, you know, your life today. So let's just say you're an entrepreneur or an entrepreneur, you know, whether you're a big corporation or a, you know, a, a, like where you've got a great job, great career, you love it. Cool. You know, are you getting the most out of that? And are you living your best life? And, and I, when I say, are you living your best life? It really means, are you living the life that you have envisioned? And the thing about that, I think, you know, one of the takeaways in that conversation is how many times have we heard people say, I'll be happy when, Mm. you know, I'll be, I'll feel successful when, or I'll be, you know, I'll be better when it's like the future is way ahead of them, but they're not really appreciating and enjoying the life they have today. So there's a fundamental that we use all the time. It's uh, like I say, there's lots of cliches that we'll throw in there, but you know, the cliche in this case is, you know, when your vocation is like your vacation, you will never work another day in your life. What does that that mean? What does that mean? And for us, it means we love what we do. So when we get up every day and it's far from perfect, we have all of our challenges, but that's all part of it. But we love what we do because in our case, and we talked about this on the last podcast, one of our drivers is purpose. That's not everybody's driver, but it's one of our key drivers is purpose. Uh, and we get to wake up every day knowing that our commitment is to build our businesses, be a contribution, do a podcast, because it's ultimately serving us in terms of our purpose, which is then serving the life we want to create for ourselves. And am, am I being accurate in that statement? Well, yeah, we were thinking, talking this morning on the deck, having coffee, just about being able to say, you know, this is really what we want. In order to get on a plane or to go on a vacation, it means we have to li- we have to leave our amazing life, mm-hmm. our dogs, our property, our our chosen family, our friends. You know, I mean, I, I would love for our family, you know, to be closer. Your sister, my brother, and you know some of our extended family. I would love them to be closer. But the truth is, this is our life. This is what we created. And yes, for me, this is what I've envisioned. 
And each stage of our life on our journey, which has been hilarious, we, we've gone from downtown Vancouver at the Shangri-La to living on the acreage to, you know, being at the Olympic Games to, you know, being, you know, having this amazing life. And it, yes, is it what I've envisioned? But had I known back then when I was starting to do my vision work and starting to set intentions and outcomes that it was going to actually come true, I probably would have been a little bit more clear <laughs> saying maybe a little bit more, maybe we need a little bit more financial um, training or learning around certain things. Mm. But ultimately for me, yes, this is the life I envisioned. And this is, I don't need to take a vacation. And I, you know, I know I talk to people a lot that they can't wait for their next trip to the, whatever to the mm -hmm. beach. Uh, and I, I do, I love the beach and I love going away and I love getting on planes. But when I get on a plane right now and I go to Montreal and I work with the ice dancers or I go to a competition or I go see my father and my brother, it's cause it's what I choose to do. It's what I love to do. It's not, you know, the, the comment I've heard over the years and with certain friends or business people is like, if I can just get, I just need to get through these next two weeks then. Mm -hmm. Or when I get this done, then I will be happy. Mm -hmm. So there's always this thing that happens before they get to feel success. Or they have to do this, 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 and this, all these shitty things or things they don't want to do before they get to actually take a rest or take a break or feel success. And that's the piece of this conversation I really want to land for people. Well, I think it's important to understand, you know, that we all like, if we're in a project, for example, we want that project and we want to engage in it. We want to come out the other side and have it be the way we want that project. We want it to turn out the way we want to turn it out and or for it to turn out. Uh, and in the meantime, there's lots of pressure. There's lots of things to do. But in the, the doingness of it, are you actually taking some time to enjoy it in spite of the pressure? You know, are you taking time to enjoy your life in spite of the risks that you may be feeling? You know, this is really part of the conversation. And, you know, back to what we kind of started with is I want to talk about in that context is do you believe in yourself enough to believe that you can have that? So we talk a lot about, I mean, this is hence the mindset matters. But when we're working with clients, if we're looking at what they're doing in business, you know, we're looking at financial statements. We're talking about profit and loss statements. What's your balance sheet look like? What's your marketing plan? What are your budgets? How are you hiring? What's your culture? What's your community? What's your environment? You know, what is your brand promise? What does it look like into the future? I mean, we're getting into the details of the business structure, but none of that can work without having a mindset that number one allows you to be coachable, allows you or gives you insights into what your values are. Like doing the self-reflective work is absolutely essential and critical to having not just success in your business, but having your business and your life come together so that it doesn't feel like your business is driving your life. And that's an important part of it. You know, I've always, I set a goal in my context many years ago that my life isn't my business. My business is a support of my life. That got refined to be my life and my business are just one. They come together because I love what I do. And that ultimately is having awareness, being able to self-reflect, being clear on what your vision is, knowing that it's going to change. And that is really the fundamental work. Now I'm going to go to you, which is me kind of back to where we started. You talked in the past about believing in yourself. So when you work with your clients and many of them athletes, and I think athleticism and, and athletes and that world is just kind of a subculture of what real life is all about. But talk to us a little bit about when you talk about with your clients about believing in themselves, what are you seeing? Because in that is language and self-talk and the, the words they choose. Can you dig into that a little bit? Uh, wow, that's a that's a great segue. I mean, when you think about believing in I, in yourself, for example, believing in myself, what it came to me to to mean was, do I trust myself, and do I trust myself to make the decisions that I need to make to move my life forward? And the trust factor, when it comes to that, can lead to really consistent decision making based on values. And that's really what I got to when it came to believing in myself. So 
I couldn't believe I couldn't believe in somebody else or believe in somebody else's journey if I didn't believe in myself. And that work, that self-reflective work, the work that we do, the work that we are opening up to and and sharing with people during you know in shift or even in these podcasts is that the mindset of believing in yourself comes from do you trust yourself do you trust yourself to make the decisions that you're going to make to move your life forward in the direction that you say you want and that's what i got to with the athletes is that some of them don't believe in 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 themselves to the point where they're working so hard and they just don't expect to win they're like well you know, I'm going to get all that way. And then somebody's, you know, going to do better than me, or there's some politics involved or whatever, it's not going to happen. So the biggest thing for me, when it comes to believing in oneself, believing in myself and creating an environment for the athletes to at least have the conversation about what would it take? What would it be like? What would it feel like if you did believe in yourself? Mm -hmm. If you did trust yourself. What would that feel like? And some of it is so rooted in historical trauma, bad coaching, maybe, you know, as parents, we all do the best we can, but some of that is rooted so, so deeply, but it's not psychology. And that's the, that's the difference when I'm working with an athlete, when we get to this point, and even with my HNW clients or our shift clients, there's a place where that belief in self is so damaged because of some result that they'd have that happened when they were children or teenagers or in mm. university or college, or, mm. you know, they got, they got screwed over by a business partner. So mm. you start to, that trust starts to get damaged. And when that trust in self starts to get damaged and you don't have a way to circle back to that place of, okay, well, what do I need to do? What do I need to do to reconnect to myself, to my values? And how do I build that self-worth back up? Well, there's an interesting part of what you just said, you know, trauma is, you know, whatever trauma you may have experienced as a kid growing up, or maybe as a, even as an adult, it sets you back. And then there is a healing process. There is a recovery process. You know, if you break a leg, if you get a knee operated on, which I've had, uh, you know, when you're in the process of healing, it doesn't happen overnight. And, you know, building your business, recovering, getting clear, on what you need to do next is in fact a process. You know, it takes incremental steps. You know, we often will always go back to using the gym. You don't go into the gym and lift, you know, your personal best every day. It works up to something that you want to achieve and you hit those targets, but you do it by just incrementally moving forward with a kind of a clear vision. But if you go into the gym, never believing that you can pull it off, then ultimately you probably won't pull it off. When we think about business, when we, and you and I have, and I mean, I think about rain a lot, real estate investment network where, you know, we have worked with so many real estate investors and, and, or small business orders because we treat real estate investing like a business. You know, we think about Aside from, you know, loving what you do, is the business profitable? Is it scalable? Is what you're doing repeatable? Are you just buying yourself a job? These are actually quite important questions that need to be asked in order for you to create your vision going forward. You know, do you have a mission? You know, uh, are you really clear on what your intention is? What's that all to say? It's all to say that it has to stem back to believing in yourself enough to take those incremental steps to invest in yourself, whether that be with a coach or a mentor or in whatever it is that you're trying to start, are you prepared to invest the time, the energy to get it to where you wanted to go? Because it's not an easy kind of path to live. I think often we have said this, that you look at the athlete on the podium with the, one of the medals. That's what people want but they don't think about the lifelong journey to get there. They look at the billionaires and that's what they want. They don't look at the 60 years to get there, the 40 years of business to get there. Because if you're hanging out on social media, what does it look like? Oh, I could do that tomorrow. Let me get to work. That's some, I'm, I'm a little bit tongue in cheek in that, but that's often what it seems like. Or let me buy a lottery ticket. Oh, I know. Let me buy a lottery ticket. You know, so that's the other option, which is, you know, let's just roll the dice and gamble. There are those rare occasions where somebody does it overnight. It was interesting, again, in this podcast that I listened to, it was such a cool 
thought process is that this particular podcast, and I'm, I, I'm not that I don't want to give it credit, but I don't remember the name of the podcast. Uh, Cody Sanchez was a guest, but that was not the podcast. That was just Cody Sanchez being a guest. And she's is a diary of a CEO. No, 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 that's not what it is. Think, oh, point yeah. is, doesn't matter. I'll put it in the show notes. If you come to YouTube, I'll make sure it's in the description. The point is this, is she sees in what she does, and believe me, she's an off the charts in the world of podcasts, in the world of business, crazy what she's accomplished and done at a very young age. Really quite remarkable, but she doesn't negate how hard a work it's been and how much time and energy she puts into it. So back to what I was trying to say is that we're driven by what we see. So many are driven by what we see in terms of, you know, the Bentley, the Rolls Royce, the private plane. That looks, you know, like all of the stars, all of the superstars. They don't talk about how they got there. They don't talk about the business deals they did. They don't talk about the mm. privilege perhaps they had. What they do is we buy into the hook called, oh, look at the Bentley, look at the Rolls Royce, look at the private airplane, look at the mansion. Look at the people I hang out with. And there's this illusion that that's what you're working for. When in fact, what did they have to do to get there? And that's where they step over it. But guess what? Those podcasts was really interesting. If you look at the most successful stars, for example, and we're off on a tangent, sorry, but you can look at any number of TikTokers, for example. And in this example, they used The Rock. She did a study because that's what she does. One of the things she does on Successful Business Guys, she looked at The Rock and looked at all his TikTok. And do you know that on his in his TikTok videos, and I don't follow The Rock, I don't know this to be true. I just am repeating what I heard. And she's seen it with others. Point is this, 80% of his videos where he's at the gym, working out, being cool, have a very direct or subliminal message from one of the businesses that he owns or, or all in. of his businesses. Yeah. Or any of them. Right. But 80% of his videos have something in that segment and he'll be sipping some tequila, which is totally not in the topic at all of what he's talking about, but it's that subliminal subconscious conscious message. And that's how he's building one of the ways he's you know be becoming or has become the billionaire that he is. And I mean, he's just one example of many. And the point is, that is the hook, is the outcome of this Bentley, uh, the outcome of the jet. But he's not talking about, and many are not sharing what it took to get there, number one. And the quietest billionaires, you know, multi-millionaires are quietly not doing anything in the public social uh, platform space. They just go about their business and they don't want to be even seen or heard or talked about. So, and that's, by the way, statistically, that's what's proven. I don't know what my whole point of all of this is, but I, I thought it might be an interesting story. No, it totally is. And I started listening to her, like uh, Cody Sanchez. She's maybe, what, 35, if that. Yeah. Um, if you want to follow her, she's quite um, cool. brilliant in what she does. Um, I think what you're, my, what I'm getting from what you're saying too, is that who we're being and the outcomes that we have is it aligned and is it connected with what we say we want with what we say and who we are? I mean, I haven't been on social media for three years since I started getting taken down from Facebook because I was, you know, speaking my truth and, and, and saying things that maybe the overlords weren't happy with. So I just stopped. And then I had a, a friend or a cousin not long ago say, Oh wow, Stephanie's really gone dark. Hey, I'm like, I haven't gone dark. I'm just maybe not promoting all the stuff that I used to do on social media. I would like to consider, let's do a challenge. Let's do a challenge. Let's post on social media the most boring things and the morning breath and the ugliest things that are going on and see how many followers we get. Well, right? I don't why we know the results of that. So <laughs> Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So take a look. If we're going back to mindset, we're going back to personal power and life and business. We also have to decide what we're going to be authentic around, because if we're only just even following those things that we think that we want, the bling, the, the planes, the, the, you know, the Dennis Johnson, what's his name? Dwayne Johnson, you know, the rock lifestyle, you know, that to me is, I'm not interested. I'm it's to me, it's unsustainable. It's, it's, I don't want that kind of pressure. What I do want is to connect with people, to have a purpose, to support 
people being their best selves, to allow the conversation to occur without all that extraneous distraction. It's so important to me that even in our coaching and our shift programs, or even with the athletes back circling back to the athletes is that the reason some of them don't believe in themselves is because they spent so much time on social media. Social media, I think is a uh, one that I've opting out of more and more. Certainly we share the podcast and I'm quite active on Twitter, but you know, from a sharing personal stuff on social media. I don't do a lot of that. You'll see pictures of the dogs <laughs> or, or maybe when I'm traveling on business. So the point is that uh, that's just not who we are, but that doesn't make anybody who likes that wrong. It's only to say that we've gotten really clear on what is meaningful to us and what matters to us. Back to something that you said, I think has to be uh, pointed out again is what are you from your most authentic self? So in other words, are you being a certain way because that's what you think it'll take to be liked? Is it something that mm -hmm. you think needs to be successful, whatever you define success? Have you even defined what success means for you? And then if it is a lot of money, what is driving a lot of money? Now, I, I listen, we love to make money, make no mistake about that. But we're also really clear that for us, it's not about buying more cars or another car or, you know, bling. And it's just not where we are in our life. That has to do, I think, with something to do with our age. You know, you certainly, when we were 30 and 40 and 50, there was still probably a part of that, that we were building our life and what we wanted in our life, the foundation of it. You know, today we're operating from a different place where we want to continue to live our purpose, but we're not connected or as attached to whatever revenue we generate. Is it it's supporting our life, not buying more stuff to ensure to walk. That's just where we're at. That's at least how I feel about it. The point of all of that is to say this, is that are you that clear on mm -hmm. what it is that you're trying to create your business around, why you're trying to create it? Are you understanding what your mission, what your vision is, what drives you, what lights you up? Are you a technician right today and then wanting to be a business owner and even understand what that means? Because if you don't, then that will get in your way. Let me assure you that mm -hmm. I've been on that path <laughs> many times. Well, you know, it's funny that you say that. And I think as we bring this one home is that if we circle back to the intention of this podcast is that we want to connect people to these conversations that we're having and maybe they're having them in their own head mm -hmm. or their own. You're having these conversations with your own business um, associates, your family members is that where in the world do you have the space to unpack this kind of stuff, to actually ask the questions? Yeah. What does success mean to me? Do I have to have more stuff, more followers, more, more this, more that? Is my life externally driven? Am I only looking for approval? Because I don't want to step over what you said is, is that if that is driven by approval and I'm only feeling successful because people like me or people right now like like, like me, then, you know, it can get really shallow. And what makes me nervous is that that's creating a great divide around the external motivation and that internal kind of drive and motivation that it, that it really does take to make decisions, take decisions, align with your values and, and really work through your life so that it supports your business and work through your business so that it supports your life. You know, as I finally, you know, as we wind this right down, I uh, want to say to a couple of young men, younger men, I don't want to say young men, but younger men, everybody's younger to me these days. But ultimately, uh, I heard you when we had the conversation about not having other like minded men to have these conversations with. I did hear you. And uh, I'm starting to connect the dots in behind the scenes for men who really want to connect with other men that can have meaningful conversations that are probably a little bit more authentic, probably a little closer to the heart, uh, being a little bit more vulnerable and understanding that you can't be that way with everybody. You actually have to create the environment forward. So I've heard you, I'm connecting all those dots. I will be reaching out. I want to send out that message. And uh, Stephanie, uh, I think we covered a lot of ground. Hopefully we got a good message out there. I think we did. You know, it's time to, uh, I think for everybody to understand that in the doingness of, understanding the mechanics of how to operate your career, how to grow your, or how to operate your business or grow your career 
in it, there's always a mindset matters component of it. You know, there's that fundamental understanding of believing in yourself and then the reflection and contemplation, if you will, of who you're being in the context of your life. Anything you want to add to that or I'm signing off? I think you're signing off. But ultimately, honey, I got to tell you, you look great in that color, that red <laughs> shirt. All you people that are listening on audio, you got to come on, on YouTube because Patrick looks great in this deep red color. Oh, my gosh, you're so hot. Love okay. you. That's why I love you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.